Yo, what's happening, bro? What up? What's up, bro? You all right? Yeah, man. How you feeling? Cool. I like them AirPods. Where you get them from, man? Let me hold them. These are actually <laughs> the the Raycons, man. The Raycons. Oh, dope, man. Shouts yeah. out to Ray J. I actually got them in the opposite way. I was wondering why they felt funny, but yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, his, his yeah. man just sent them to me, so you know these joints have been working very well. I actually dope. like them better than the the AirPods, man. But uh. But listen, oh. appreciate you taking out the t taking the time to talk with me just to make a plays combo. We're just gonna talk about like the plays you've been making, how you made them. But I always like to ask, like, how are you and your people doing during this crazy year? Oh yeah, I was about to ask you the same thing. But uh, yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> so great minds think alike. But uh, no, uh, my family we're good, man. We're safe, practicing all safety precautionary measures, and uh, just staying prayerful. How about yourself and your family? Man, same thing. Just staying out the way and. Uh, you know, thanking God for the blessings that we do have. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Bro. Yeah, man. So, so what were you working on, or what were you focusing on before, like everything started to get shut down and started getting crazy? Yeah. So before, um, before the pandemic started, I was actually on tour with uh my homegirl El Varner. You know, we did a like a twenty city tour. We yeah. Started, it kicked off this January, well earlier this year, January and February. It ended in February. So I had that had that going on, and then from there, dropped my uh, EP, which is entitled "Forever Yours" on all platforms. And then I had a, had a singles prior to that, and made the top ten on the Billboard. So I just been grinding. So now I'm just on my new single, which is like number six on the Billboard right now. Okay. And, uh, just just taking it easy, bro. That's it. I see. I see what you're doing. So let's go back to the beginning, man. Like like when did you get involved with music? Who were some of your early inspirations? T tell us about your, your story that, that a lot of people may or may not know. Oh, for sure, yeah. So I'm born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, my mother, my father was a pastor. My mom, she worked for the Board of Education. And uh, basically, you know, my mom, she had a group uh, with my aunts, and they were signed to Smokey Robinson when they were younger. So wow. they already, yeah, like, but that was before I even existed. But still, right. my mom, you know, music was always a part of my life because my mom would always sing, and I would sing in church. And so that's that's basically what gave me my inspiration to start singing, and so that's kind of like where I initially started at, and uh, from there I just it just progressed and progressed over the course of time. Man, that's that's what's up. So who were like some of your early inspirations outside your family? Okay, so outside my mom, I would say um, like uh, ooh, let me see, Teddy Pendergrass for sure. Okay, uh, you into the classic? Yeah, I like all old school, man. Gerald yeah. Burke, Babyface. Uh man, uh Earth Wind and Fire, Kim. Like people like that, you know, like real old school people, Temptations. That's like yeah. always been my 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 primary focus, you know, trying to mimic whatever they did. So when when did you really start taking music seriously? When did you know that this was something you were gonna do as a career? I think that defining moment was in undergrad. Uh my friend, she signed me up for a talent show and I was always afraid to sing in front. Now. About that, man. Uh oh, we back? We no, back? I'm, I'm, I'm back. Sorry, somebody uh -oh. called me. <laughs> oh, I thought it was me. I'm like, man, my internet always jacked. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, not again. But no, uh, so what, what gave me my uh, my motivation? I was in undergrad. I did a talent show. And it was over like six thousand people at my college, man. And you know, normally they, they boo you, man. Like they don't care who you are. They will boo you in a heartbeat. Wait a minute. So, what college? What college did you go to? Grambling State. You know what? I knew it was an HBCU because I went to Morehouse and we did the same thing during our talent shows at Homecoming. They yeah, pull man. out the keys and stop, stop man, they will the jiggle you off. Man, what? Yeah. I, I knew it was an HBCU. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, my, yeah. My, my, my great uncle was Dr. Benjamin E. Mays. He was the president of Morehouse. Wow. You know? Small yep. world, bro. Yeah, discovered my frat brother. But it's all, we, we, we get back in time. <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah, it was Grambling, man. So, uh, you know, I did the talent show and uh, I sang like a, it's like a medley, you know, it was like Tank and like a few other songs. And the girls just went crazy. They were like crying and on their knees. I'm like, this can't be real. People yeah. didn't even know I went to the school, man. They're like, we thought you was like a book <laughs> art, signed artist. I'm like, nah, man, just a simple cat. But that was that defining moment. It gave me my courage. Man, you know? and, then, and then from there, what my was My courage, rather. And from there, what were the next steps as far as, like, your development and your career? Oh, so I uh, started working with Wyclef John. 
you know, I was doing some writing. He signed me as an artist along with my homeboys. Well, they were my boys back in the day, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, uh, along with them. And then from there, uh, and when we broke up, I went to China. I lived in China for like a year and a half, you know, doing my thing. And then that situation kind of faded. And then from there, I got to deal with Universal Republic. So I've just been grinding ever since. Just grinding. Yeah. Talk, talk about those experiences, like as far as when working with Wyclef, who is definitely, you know, one of the most creative artists of our generation. And then two, um, you know, your experience over at, over at China. I've, I've had some people go over there and they said it's like a completely different world where they take Man. Pictures, where they take pictures of you in certain places that you were going. All the time, bro. It's like everywhere you go, especially as a black male, you know. Right, I'll exactly. Give you, I'll give you an example. One day I was uh, I was in the bathroom. Actually, I went over there to perform. I was doing like tours around China. Okay. And I was I was in the bathroom using it, man. It's like one of those moments. I'm like, yo, this place is weird. And this dude came up behind <laughs> me and started massaging my shoulders. What? Like, bro, bro. <laughs> and, you know, but it wasn't on nothing like that. He was just. I don't know. It was like I was like an extraterrestrial type of being or something. Like they never seen a black male over there, and he just wanted to right. make me comfortable. So that was it. Was it was wow. a strange experience, but it was still fun in, in a sense. Uh, and then from there, um, something about the. No, I was saying like your experience working with Y Clef. Oh, and then Clef. So with Clef, uh, it was just a phenomenal experience considering his history. You know, uh, I was signed to him around the same time. At City High, you remember City High? I sure do. Yep, we we were label mates along with uh, the product GMB, and mm -hmm. so that that whole experience just being around Clef and some of the Fuji, well not Lauren, but like Prize, so I was around him a lot. Um, it was just a phenomenal experience because I looked, I've always admired Clef's work, you know. So I still can't believe I was signed to him to this day. You know? What was one of the most important things that he taught you during that time? Patience. Okay. Patience, you know, because, you know, when you get signed, you just automatically assume, like, I might have all this money, and, and it's <laughs> nothing like that. It's nothing like that, man. I'm sure you know. It's right. just the complete yeah. opposite. So it was just more so about understanding uh, as to how the industry works. So I had a better interpretation after signing with him, but it was still, you know, one unforgivable uh, or forgettable, rather, experience. So wouldn't trade it for the world. So what's your creative process like today as far as your approach to making music and your sound and your style? Um, like, how long did it take you to find your voice? And, and, and like I said, how do you approach, you know, creating music? So my style is just geared towards, like, it's, it's more so like the old school, like that throwback type music. Like, you know, right from, from the 70s, 80s, on up to like the early 2000s. That's, that's like what I, I'm most passionate about. Uh, I think my style... Right now, uh, I think it, it's, it's starting to grow on people because people who have missed that that, that certain sound for so long, they they're you know they're more I'm not gonna say prone, but they, it's it's a lot easier to accept considering that for uh -huh. them it's like real music. You know, it's not like right, I'm using right. like a lot of auto tune and all these vocal enhancements. So now it's just about. I figured out a lane that works because there's not a lot of people in that really like old old school lane. So right. that works perfectly for me versus me singing about, you know, shake your thing on the flow and all this other crazy stuff. I can stay a f far away from that considering that the open lane right now is just old school R&B, for me at least, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that so, makes sense, man. And, and just given the time that we're in, people still kind of being inside and the pandemic going on, you know, people are really looking – they're, they're streaming R and B more than they were when we were like outside yeah. for real. And that's and funny you mentioned that. Yeah, definitely like the the nostalgic R and B, just exactly. taking people to a different mind space and stuff. So, what does the rest of twenty twenty look like for you? Twenty twenty is just you know my team and I just putting out more music. We got the single Moon, which is on all digital platforms. Like I said, it's yeah. number se number seven or maybe six. R&B record in the um, country right now on Billboard. You're moving, you moving. Moving, man. God is good. And then on yeah. top, oh, my publicist, he just said seven. So, shouts out to Ray. Okay, <laughs> seven, seven. seven. Seven's a good number. Seven. Yes, it is. You know, you know what time a, it is. I, I know what time it is. You Even though we is. wanted to get to that top five, seven is a good number. It's a great number. And then from yeah. there, we, do, we just dropped my other single uh, entitled uh, Hopelessly in Love, which on, is, is on all digital platforms. Okay. We've been seeing been receiving great numbers on Spotify with that, man. So we're just taking it all in. My team and I, real small team, but we're all focused on, you know, the situation at hand is, is just getting this music out there, 
branding ourselves and in hopes that, you know, one day I'll be something huge. So, you know, that's just the primary yeah. focus right now, man. Moon, again, which is on all platforms and uh, hopelessly in love. You know, those are my two new singles. So just pushing okay, them, man. Let's, let's run the numbers up on that and, and make sure that we get you to that top five and eventually that number man. one spot. Appreciate you know it. Mean? Claiming it, bro. We claiming it. We claiming it. We claiming it. Claim it. Claim it. What do you like doing outside of music? Outside of music, uh, tell Jay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think my manager just logged in. But uh, um, uh, outside. Mo of Harley, music, what's I, up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know him. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, he funny guy. But um, so outside of music, I love working out. I love boxing. Yeah, I love I love taking time out with my kids, man, and being a dad. Um, and that's pretty much it, man. Just focusing on my craft. You know, it's it's not easy as an independent artist, man. I'm sure you know. So yeah. every day, you know, my team and I, we're just trying to figure out ways to proactively, you know, attack this industry and stay relevant. You know, with all yeah. things considered. Being yes, an independent artist is is really a double edged sword nowadays because you have the freedom and independence to move how you want to move release the music that you want to release when you right. want to release it. But at the same time, it's like you don't have the big machine behind you and <laughs> you're coming you're coming out of your own pocket. So, you know, yeah. again, there it, it just depends on what works for you individually. You know, exactly. I never tell people like, yo, you shouldn't sign or you should sign. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, salute to you getting as, as high as you are on the chart as an independent artist because that is hard to do. And I don't think people really realize that yeah, all the behind the scenes and, and politics that go on. It can become quite complex. So all praise to my team, man. Because like it's a small team, my PR, my manager, uh, my homeboy, Steve James, a few others, you know. But, you know, we, you know, we're all just a small team, but all extremely focused on, you know, just making it. And, uh, you know, so God is good, man. We're just going to keep striving for excellence, bro. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. What's one thing that most people would not know about? One thing, um, I can sing in Chinese, but that's another story. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's okay. it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, man. How long did that take you to learn? About six months. Man, that's good, bro. But I was at it every day. I had no choice. Yeah. I had no choice living over in China, so it was kind of like, you know, what, what else can what, I do? When you did that, did they really appreciate you singing in their, their native language? They loved it because they've never seen anything like it. So the Chinese, they have a very interesting way of capitalizing off certain things. So they knew exactly right. what they were doing. They're like, listen, we got this black dude. He coming over here to sing. <laughs> no one's ever seen it before. This is like, you know, so it worked. But it was, an ex it, was, it was a nice experience for the most part, even though they still owe me some money, but it's all good. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's all good. We, we need to get that right, man. What's we need to get that right. You might have to go back over there and see somebody. Right, man. But no, like I said, man, like right now, again, you know, we just grinding it out, man, and, and just focused on branding and, and just building my name uh, for yeah. my team and I. And uh, it's just great, man. So I hope for those who are tuning in, you guys, you know, download my singles, Moon, and uh, yeah. Hopelessly in Love, and my EP, Forever Yours. It's on all digital platforms. So please support me, and, you know, and I'll be greatly appreciated. Absolutely, man. Well, I'm going to wrap it up on this question right here. Obviously, 2020 has been a crazy year. It's been a roller coaster year, something that we've never seen before. But it's also been kind of a year of self-reflection because we're not able to move around. And a lot of us have been forced to stay in the house. It's given us more time to think, self-reflect. Is there anything that you in particular have learned about yourself or just life in general during this time? I've learned that nothing is promised, you know, and in and, and, and moments like this, it makes you really appreciate the things you have. Uh, if, if no one else can relate to that, then I don't know what to tell you because stuff like this, if it doesn't bring you closer to loved ones, if it doesn't bring you closer to whomever, you know, uh, past relationships, removing dead weight, whatever you have to do, this is the time now to get everything together because I tell you, there's no telling if in fact this may happen again. So just for all the people who are listening right now, just be encouraged. Don't give up because I know right now we're going through trying times. But most importantly, take care of yourselves mentally, physically, everything, you know, and trust God. Trust God. You can't go wrong. Amen to that right there. Great advice. Great words of wisdom. My brother, I appreciate your time. Keep hustling. Appreciate you. Keep moving. You know what I'm saying? 
You know, we got we got to stream that moon and, and get it get it high on the charts. Yeah, people. man. What's spot, bro? Shouts out to Pandora, y'all show me love, so I appreciate it. No doubt, yeah, no man. doubt, man. Well, listen, be safe out there and uh, let's stay in contact, bro. For sure, bro. Be blessed, man. You and your family. All right, you too. All right.